Welcome to this Gwen Ultimate Guide for Season 11. All the information has been taken from the best pro and solo queue players, as well as a top stat website. This guide contains everything you need to succeed in your goals this season. Abilities plus tips and tricks for each, combos and important mechanics, builds with the best runes and item options, gameplay strategies at every stage of the game, top and jungle roles, and strengths and weaknesses, which you can check out first if you're looking for reasons to play this cutting edge champion. Gwen is a mix between an assassin and a fighter, and is one of the few AP champions with this combination. If you're looking to 1v1 opponents, dive deep into teamfights, and split push your way to victory, this might just be the perfect champ for you. I'm Zeus, and let's cut straight to the next section of this guide. Let's quickly go over her abilities and cover tips and tricks for each. If you want advanced tips, check out the mechanics section where we dive deep into each ability. I've added way more tips there as I didn't want to overload this section with too much information early on. Her passive, Thousand Cuts, deals 1% of the target's maximum HP as bonus magic damage anytime Gwen basic attacks or uses her Q and ultimate, which I'll go over in each of these abilities. This passive heals Gwen, deals additional damage to minions below 40% HP, and additional damage to monsters like Baron Dragon and Jungle Camps. The 1% maximum HP damage scales with AP, so it makes it great to fight even the tankiest opponents. The sustain will be essential for trading and surviving in those clutch fights. This passive will make it easy to wave clear, take jungle camps, and help your team clear objectives faster. It even applies to towers, making Gwen a threatening split push champion. Her Q, Snip Snip, has two parts. A passive, Snippy, which basically just stacks auto attacks up to four times within six seconds, which is displayed under her health bar. You'll then use these stacks for extra damage in her active. When you use Q, Gwen snips once initially, then consumes her snippy stacks for additional damage, finished off by a final snip dealing increased damage. Basically, she can snip up to six times with full stacks or two times with no stacks. The center of the snip snip will deal true damage and apply her thousand cuts passive. You can stack it by auto attacking minions, towers, or even wards, helping you reach full stacks before a trade or engage. Whether you have 0 or 4 stacks, the casting time remains the same. Use the AoE to take minions and jungle camps faster, and even the useful healing from her passive. Gwen's W, Hollowed Mist, activates a mist area lasting 5 seconds. You can recast this mist area and it will be centered around Gwen, or it will automatically shift if you try to leave the area the first time. Inside the mist, Gwen has increased armor and magic resist, and she becomes completely untargetable to all enemies outside the mist, except towers. It's important to understand the enemy's perspective and how you appear while within the mist. Enemies can still see you move and use abilities, they just won't be able to target you. In order to gain that perspective, playing against Gwen will help you see the potential of this unique ability. Just for clarity, it absorbs targeted enemy abilities, but not any other skill shots, so any other of your teammates inside your mist will not be protected. If you use Flash, the mist will teleport to Gwen's location. Gwen's E, Skip and Slash, is a dash to the target location. After the dash, Gwen gains bonus magic damage on her auto attacks, bonus attack speed, and 100 bonus range for 4 seconds. If you auto attack within the 4 seconds, the cooldown will be halved. E is an auto attack reset, so remember to auto attack, instantly E, then quickly auto attack again to get 2 autos in a short amount of time. This will be useful to stack your Q. The closer you dash to yourself, even if it's right on the spot, the quicker you can auto attack. This will be your main tool for gap closing, dodging skill shots, and escaping, especially over walls. And finally, her ultimate, Needlework. Gwen can activate this long range AoE ability three times, each dealing magic damage, applying a thousand cuts passive, and slowing enemies. The first cast launches one needle. The second cast requires Gwen to auto attack or cue any target to unlock it. Then you'll launch three needles. The third and final cast also requires autos or cue to unlock it. Then you'll launch five needles. Each needle deals 1% of the target's maximum HP from her 1000 cuts passive. 
making it effective at taking tanks as well as one-shotting squishies. The long range allows you to potentially snipe low HP targets. The slow this provides allows Gwen to catch enemies, land your important Q true damage, as well as stay on top of your enemies to constantly stay in auto attack range. Even if your main target is out of range, remember to auto attack or Q any nearby enemies, wards or any jungle monsters to activate the last two set of needles. Ability Order In terms of maxing abilities, you want to max Q first as it increases the damage, specifically the true damage in the center, and decreases the cooldown. It will be your main tool to poke, trade, and wave clear. You want to max E second, as it increases your attack speed bonus and decreases the cooldown. And just for clarity, leveling E won't increase your attack range or your bonus damage on hit. You want to max W last, as it only decreases the cooldown, which is still quite high at around 14 seconds at max level, making it important to only use this ability when you're going for important trades, dodging life-threatening abilities, or positioned dangerously in teamfights. You want to max your ultimate anytime you can, which is at level 6, 11, and 16. Although we will be maxing Q first, you'll actually want to level E at level 1, as this provides amazing trade potential in early laning, as well as an amazing escape tool and catch tool for invades and counter invades respectively. Runes There is currently one viable rune taken by Gwen players, and that's Conqueror and her kit makes it easy to activate the full 12 stacks in order to gain the bonus damage and the healing at full stacks. The minor runes have a lot more flexibility. As for the first minor rune, it's a close call between Triumph and Presence of Mind. Triumph can be life-saving in clutch moments, but Presence of Mind will provide that consistent mana increase, especially on takedowns. I would recommend taking Triumph after you've played Gwen a few games and can manage her mana, and therefore won't need to rely on Presence of Mind. You can also take into account certain items. In some cases, you might prioritize items with mana, for example a frozen heart, and therefore won't need to rely on presence of mind. The second minor rune which is almost always recommended is Legend Alacrity for the increased attack speed. Legend Tenacity should be considered if you're up against a heavy CC comp, but Merc Treads can always make up for that. The final rune you'll want to take most games is Last Stand. As a champion who heals a massive amount in teamfights from her passive, items and runes, Gwen can sit at low HP quite often and therefore take advantage of the increased damage of this rune. Coup de Gras is a close second if you prefer it. Second Path Options There are two optimal second paths. Resolve, which mostly prioritizes defense, and Domination, which prioritizes offense and sustain. With Resolve, you'll want to take Bone Plating in most cases to negate quite a bit of damage against enemy combos and trades. Second Wind is another option, best taken against champs who poke occasionally, allowing you to heal over 10 seconds. Although not as popular, even conditioning is viable. The second minor rune is a close call, but in order of popularity, revitalized for enhanced shield and heals, which synergizes nicely with Gwen's kit, unflinching for general tenacity, and overgrowth for increased health. Now for domination. When you're after offensive options, you'll want to take Sudden Impact, which will activate any time you use E, and Ravenous Hunter, which will provide sustain, increasing per unique takedown. You can swap out Taste of Blood for Sudden Impact for more sustain, but at that point, I would just recommend going with Resolve Tree options mentioned previously. Items. As for starting items, Gwen has a few options. You can actually go for Doran's Blade in most easy to medium lanes where you'll abuse your ease attack speed and range to heavily outtrade any opponents and be able to sustain by attacking minions. You'll want to take Doran's Ring with 2 HP pots for lanes where you can't guarantee you'll be able to utilize the healing from Doran's Blade. The sustain and AP should provide everything you need to survive until your next major buy or even get a kill. Finally, you'll want to take Doran's Shield against Heavy Poke or either other hard melee champs. Use the healing passive to restore any damage you've taken by backing off. You can force a lot of champions to go oom, and you'll actually outtrade many melee champs who have already taken Doran's Blade. A good aim for your first back is to have over 1300 gold to complete your Leeching Seer, which builds into your mythic item Riftmaker. However, there are plenty of early back options to consider. Dark Seal for a cheap AP spike and potential to gain stacks. You can pick up a Doran's Ring if mana is an issue and you've already chosen Doran's Blade to start. 
Blasting Wand will provide a heavy AP spike and get you closer to finishing a Rift Maker. You could always just opt to pick up Ruby Crystal and Amplifying Tome for a balance of HP and AP before you complete the Leeching Seer. Boots are also a great early buy and might be a priority if you need to dodge skill shots. As for completed boots, rushing certain boots against certain matchups or team comps might be the most optimal choice. Against heavy AD and auto attack champions, plated steel caps are a great rush. Against heavy AP and CC champions, Merc Treads are your best bet. Ionian boots are a great budget buy, and the ability and summoner haste will always be useful. Sorcerer boots are the most optimal if you want to prioritize damage and probably the best if the previous conditions aren't a problem. As already mentioned, and perhaps the only mythic item you want to purchase on Gwen, is Riftmaker. The item provides everything Gwen needs as a fighter. AP, HP, Ability Haste, and Omni Vamp. The passive Void Corruption rewards slightly longer trades as you'll activate 9% bonus true damage after 3 seconds in combat. The Mythic passive will provide 2% Omni Vamp and 8 AP per Legendary. All these points just amplify her strengths mentioned earlier, which is to deal massive amounts of burst and sustained damage to champions within range, and additionally true damage, as well as the potential to be unkillable with the massive amount of healing. And with careful use of your W shield and E dashing, you'll have even more potential to 1v5 at certain stages. Although you're pretty restricted to one mythic, you'll have plenty of options when it comes to legendary items. The first offensive legendary item to consider is Nash's Tooth. With a massive AP and attack speed power spike, you'll be able to burst and shred most enemies at this stage. She'll make great use of the on-hit passive with her E steroid. Another mostly offensive item is Cosmic Drive. AP, HP and Ability Haste will work perfectly with Gwen's playstyle as you'll be able to spam your Q and E in fights a lot more. As long as you buy it after Rift Maker, you'll activate the Spell Dance passive which increases your AP and movement speed anytime you're over 160 ability power. In terms of defensive options, Zonya's Hourglass is your first priority. Whether it's to defend against AD champions, the active is also useful to survive any burst champions, even AP champs. Banshee's Veil might be a perfect solution to any heavy CC and AP threats that have high potential to catch you out with some certain CC. Utility is something to consider, especially when enemy team comps contain plenty of healing. At this point, Oblivion Orb is your best bet, and you should complete Morella Nomicon if you don't have any other priorities for the increased healing reduction. If you're extremely fed and want to snowball the lead, consider Magi Soul Steal, especially if you have your Dark Seal stacked. Rabadon's Deathcap is the ultimate AP's power spike whenever you're taking over the game. Void Staff will be necessary if the enemy team is stacking MR, so don't hesitate to buy it as your fourth or even third item. Lichbane isn't exactly a bad option as Gwen will make most of the stats and passive through her auto attack playstyle. However, the previously mentioned legendaries are currently more optimal for her playstyle. Perhaps if split pushing is one of your goals, this would be more favorable compared to the other options. Don't be afraid to pick up defensive items after Riftmaker or Nash's Tooth. Having to get deep into team fights mean you'll be vulnerable to multiple enemies trying to attack you. Your W can only provide so much safety before you start taking serious damage. Therefore, you want to consider defensive items like Frozen Heart against heavy AD or auto attack teams, or Spirit Visage against heavy AP teams. Spirit Visage synergizes quite nicely with all your heals. You might even find yourself in a rare situations where you're the only melee frontline on your team and therefore prioritizing buying another tanky item like Thornmail, Randuin's, Force of Nature, etc. Again, it will be rare, but don't hesitate any time this is a case. Demonic Embrace is a final option for damage against tanky and HP based enemies, especially when there's three or more tanks. As for shards, take attack speed as your first, AP for your second, and the final shard should be to counter your laner. If you're unsure of your laner, armor runes are usually your safest bet as you can still negate auto damage from AP champions. Summoner Spells Although Flash as a first summoner spell is the most popular for mid lane Gwen, there is another combination worth considering. Ignite and Teleport are the preferred second summoner spells to choose from. You'll want to take Ignite in most lanes that you plan on picking up kills, or you just need that extra damage for dueling potential. Teleport provides both a safer laning phase and global pressure, opening up options to teleport to a team fight while split pushing. So after some experience playing Gwen, you might even want to consider taking Ignite and Teleport, although this is highly favorable for top lane Gwen, and I'll cover that later. 
Her E already keeps her quite mobile and therefore you could sacrifice a summoner like Flash. Don't worry too much about memorizing all the following combos as they are simply here to show you what she's capable of and how to deal optimal damage in ideal situations. Try not to lock yourself into step-by-step -step combos, but instead reacting and timing your abilities depending on the enemy's movement and abilities. Interactions. Auto attack reset. Gwen's E is an auto attack reset. So if you're ever in a position where you don't need to gap close and want to do optimal damage, simply auto attack, then instantly E on the spot, then auto attack again. Practice this so it becomes really smooth. It's also a great way to last hit minions. QE or EQ. Just to clarify, if you Q then E, you might lose one snip of damage. If you E then Q, you won't lose any damage assuming the enemy is in range. However, enemies might try to dash out of range once they start taking damage, in which case it might be better to Q then E first as there's a possibility they'll take more damage before they dash out of range and possibly take the final snip damage, which is the highest amount of damage. So to simplify this, I recommend EQ when the enemy has low mobility and you can guarantee all stacks of snips. If they're mobile and you almost are certain they're gonna dash out, use Q then E as there's still a good chance to land more damage before they dash away. Combos. Quick W mention. Adding her W mist into any of the following combos depends on the situation you're in, so use it whenever you think it's best or not at all. For example, you might want to use it early against melee champions to negate their damage during a trade by using all the defensive stats it provides, or use it towards the end of a trade against ranged champions as they'll try to counter your trade by poking you with abilities and auto attacks as you start walking back. Pre-6 combos. Level 1 auto attack. E, then auto attack as many times. E to gap close and activate all your bonuses, then follow up with as many auto attacks as possible. You will outtrade most enemies. This is one of the most effective ways to get a lead early on. Gwen's level 1 is one of the strongest in the games. This combo works best if you start at Doran's Blade. Try to re engage when E is off cooldown to keep your Conqueror stacks and even go for an early kill. May trade combos. If the enemy is within auto attack range, auto attack, E, auto attack, followed up by another two auto attacks, then Q. You can actually press Q the instant your last auto attack is about to land to save even more time and it will still count as 4 stacks. This is the most optimal trade combo when you're already in auto attack range which is most likely against melee champs or if you're able to catch out ranged champs say in fog of war or in a brush. If the enemy is outside of auto attack range. E, auto attack, followed by 3 auto attacks then Q. You'll be using E to gap close then 4 auto attacks finishing off with Q. Quick poke combo. Auto attack four times on a minions to fully stack your Q. Q then E. Charge up your Q on minions until it reaches full stacks, then Q and instantly E towards your target. Again, if you can guarantee all the stacks and you don't want to miss out the first snip of damage, you can just E and then Q. Save quick trade. E, W, auto attack, Q. Try to stack your auto attack three times, then E to engage. Get in that final auto attack to fully stack your Q and just as the auto is being performed, press Q. Auto attack reminder. Remember to get in as many auto attacks in your trade combos as possible to take advantage of your E steroid. This could be one of the main reasons you either win or lose a trade and potentially pick up a kill. Alt combos. There's no real best combo when it comes to using her ultimate as it depends on the enemy champion and their position. You should prioritize using it whenever you can guarantee the landing of needles on your target, preferably when they are slowed by the previous R needles or after they've used the dash or flash. Here are four example ultimate combos. Let's first go over two optimal full combos. In auto attack range. R, auto attack, E, auto attack, R, followed up by two auto attacks, R, then Q. At close range, we can abuse the auto attack reset for two instant Q stacks. Instantly using the second R, get the third auto in while R is casting. Then just about as your fourth auto lands, use R and finish off with Q. I recommend spamming R the entire time if it's a clutch fight, as it can provide you that life-saving heal right at the last moments. Outside auto attack range. R, 
E, auto attack, R, followed by two auto attacks, R, auto attack and finish off with Q. We'll be using the initial R to slow enemies further away so we're then able to get into auto attack range after we use E. Cast your second R then auto attack twice, spamming R so the third is casted at this point. Just as your fourth auto is in progress, use your fully stacked Q. Now let's go over two fast combos where speed is a priority over optimal damage. These are best when the target is either mobile, you need to deal as much damage before the rest of the team collapses, or perhaps you're about to die and just need to unleash everything. A quick burst close up. You want to fully charge Q before engage for optimal damage if possible. R, Q, R, auto attack, E, auto attack, then R. This is an extremely fast combo to unleash as much damage as possible, especially if you're able to charge up your Q beforehand. Quick burst number two, which requires a gap closer. Fully charge Q before engage opt for optimal damage as well. R, E, Q, R, auto attack and finish off with the last R. Another fast combo that unleashes as much damage in the smallest amount of time, especially if you're able to charge up your Q beforehand. Flash combos. Q flash. You want to Q and then instantly flash. Unlike QE, you won't lose the first snip of damage. Great to finish off enemies just out of range with a burst of damage. Try to stack your Q when possible for optimal damage. You can also use the same combo to quickly change position. Long range finisher. E, Q, then flash. If you need even more distance to close, use this combo to finish off enemies. Again, Aim for a stacked Q beforehand for optimal damage. Flash Mist. W, then Flash. This is another method to position the myth. I would really recommend this as you can simply E if you want to position the mist in a different area and Flash is such an important cooldown. Still, it's worth noting it exists. Unique Combos. The Double Snip. Q, then E in a different direction. You can snip one target then a second target, just keep in mind it only works facing the same direction. Mist Shift, W then E. Try to use this combo to position the mist at a safe spot where you can attack the enemy, but they'll have trouble attacking you. This may force them to either back off or enter the mist. Safety Teleport, W then TP. Anytime you have to TP to lane or perhaps into a team fight and risk being instantly attacked, use W right before the TP, increasing your chance to be safe. Teleport takes 4 seconds and your W lasts 5, therefore you'll only have 1 second of safety available. Reposition Ultimate R, E or R Flash Since there is a cast time, you can cast R then E or Flash to reposition. Useful for sniping enemies further away or to counter their dashes. Careful with using E during the first 0.25 second cast as the time it takes to dash will be longer than the cast time and may result in the R traveling before you reach your dash location. Super Ultimate Snipe E, R then Flash Cover even more distance to snipe enemies at really long range with your R. By the way, you can cancel your dash with Flash but this isn't important, just be aware that it exists. Think of this section as an extended part of the first ability section with way more tips, tricks and advanced techniques where we'll dive deeper into each ability and find out how we can use these interactions to gain an advantage. Snip Snip With experience, you'll have a good feeling for the range of Q. Enemies can be on top of you or even slightly behind you and you'll still deal the true damage. The indicator is slightly misleading as it can be shorter towards the middle and longer towards the outside of the cone. Although 4 stacks will do the most damage, sometimes it's better to get the guaranteed 3 stacks before the enemy moves out of range or you anticipate enemies dashing away. Usually when enemies aren't within your increased auto attack range, you'll only get a few snips of damage off. Spell Shield will only block one snip of Q, so this ability is extremely effective at breaking them while still outputting plenty of damage afterwards. For example, you have 6 snips at full stack Q. The first snip will remove the Spell Shield and the next 5 snips will deal damage. And while we're on stacks, it's important to know that enemies can see your stacks. Therefore, when you have full stacks, they might just start backing off. 
Another reason to use the stacks at 3 as this might catch them by surprise. Q will snip from wherever Gwen is at the time. No matter where you E dash, flash or get knocked by CC, you'll snip in that direction. This can be used to reposition during the Q cast to attack another target. If you activate Q just before you get CC'd, it will still deal damage. Anytime you anticipate getting hit by a CC ability, press Q in the direction you think enemies will be positioned. Hollowed Mist Abusing the edge of the mist to gain an advantage. We can call this area right on the edge the sweet spot. Basically, you're just within mist so you're safe, but enemies are just outside so they can't attack you. This forces enemies to either back off without dealing any damage or they have to risk moving inside the mist. The recast will move the mist center 75 units through Gwen's location. Basically, there'll always be slightly more mist in front of Gwen than behind you. For clarity, if enemies are right on the edge and you are unsure if they can attack you, check to see if they have a broken sword icon. This means they aren't able to attack you and it will disappear once they enter. The broken sword icon is actually visible to enemies. Careful if you're in fog of war or in a brush as the broken sword icon can reveal that you're nearby. Keep tabs on global ultimates or long range abilities in your game so you're always ready to activate W instantly like an Ezreal ultimate or Jinx rocket. The mist blocks auto attacks that are in mid-air, so press W as quick as possible as it can be a clutch way to survive. Remember to negate damage against minions, jungle camps, and epic monsters like Dragon and Baron. You can use the sweet spot technique for 5 seconds of safety. There is a unique interaction with blast cones when using your mist. If you or an ally uses the blast cone, you will be knocked up. However, if an enemy uses it, you won't be knocked up. Damage over time abilities like Ignite, Leandri's Burn or enemy abilities like Brand's Passive Burn will still deal damage if they damaged you before you entered the mist. It will travel with ally and enemy abilities. For example, if you take a Thresh Lantern or you are kicked by Lee Sin's ultimate. Other abilities will negate them. For example, traveling with Tom Kench's ultimate. Use this when you need to take towers or inhibs, perhaps when you're split pushing and enemies are trying to protect towers. A lot of players have a false sense of security with this ability. They think because you're under the tower, your shield stops working, as other shields in the game work that way. Important to know what it's like to play against Gwen to fully understand this ability, as this is the only ability in the game of its kind. They'll be able to see you the whole time, but they just can't target or attack you. Once you get a feeling of what this is like for yourself, you'll understand exactly what they're going through. Bait enemy abilities by sticking around that low HP and wasting their cooldowns and time. Once they use their abilities, be ready to quickly use W. Bait enemies inside the mist to last hit CS like a cannon or take a ward. This will force enemies to either lose gold or come into the mist and get attacked by you. Denying these small things can add up to make a difference later on. Just a reminder to not just use this for dodging abilities. The defensive stats are incredibly useful anytime you are in a fight and can negate a lot of damage. And just to finish off this ability, I want to mention a quick caution. Just because you can negate an enemy ability with this W doesn't mean you always should. For example, if your full HP and a Jinx rocket is coming your way, but you have low HP teammates behind you. In this case, it would be just better to tank the rocket for your teammates. Otherwise, if you W, the rocket will go through you and might just end up killing your teammates. Skip and Slash Important Wall Dashes Gwen can dash over the thin walls and most of the medium walls in the game. Try to memorize some of these medium walls around the jungle. The indicator is quite accurate here, so if you're ever unsure, if the indicator range doesn't cover the wall, you won't be able to dash over. This ability can be cast during any of Gwen's abilities. This is probably the most useful when using Q, as already mentioned, as you'll want to either dash forward to counter an enemy dash or even dash backwards if you want to kite an enemy. Get used to the increased attack range, as you will be able to get in a few extra orders in trades, especially against melee champs. You want to have a good feeling when your E bonuses run out after 4 seconds. One way is to check her animation. Once E is activated, she'll have her scissors facing upwards. Another method is to remember how many auto attacks you can get within the 4 second duration. Early game, you can get 5 autos before it runs out. Later on, this will change depending on your attack speed. At around 35 ability haste, or when you've maxed E, you won't have to worry about it as you'll always have E off cooldown within the 4 second timer. 
With the increased attack range, you will have to be cautious of using blast cones, as if you use them at max auto range, you won't always get knocked up. Therefore, just use them like you would when playing a ranged champion, and position yourself before you use it. Whether you're chasing an enemy or escaping over walls in the jungle, try to order a jungle camp, enemy, or a plan in order to reduce the E cooldown and perhaps dash over another wall sooner. The auto attack range increase means you'll be able to easily attack enemies who are over walls. Sometimes this will be the better option as you don't want to dash over the wall, but you still want to deal damage. Needlework. Spamming may seem unnecessary. However, it can be extremely effective on an ability like this, where you need to immediately release her needles as soon as possible before you can activate the next. Don't be afraid to smash that R button as quickly as possible, especially in those clutch fights. Even the best pros do this. It's also a fairly slow moving skill shot, so you want to throw out her next set of needles while the enemy is still slowed by the previous set of needles. So basically stacking the slow is another reason to spam this ability. The first cast has the quickest cast time of 0.25 seconds, the next two will take a little longer at half a second. Just like her Q, the indicators are slightly misleading. You can actually exceed the range of the R indicator slightly, so keep this in mind when aiming for targets at max range. Just like Q removes spell shield with each single snip, each needle removes a spell shield. If you ever forget how many stacks you have left or what stack you're up to, you can check the ability icon itself, or just above it, or even better, simply check the animation around Gwen without having to look down. You'll either have three needles orbiting her, which means this is your second ultimate cast, or you'll have five needles orbiting her, which is the third and final cast. Here are a few goals you want to keep in mind when using R. Position to hit more than one champ for the AoE damage and slow. It doesn't reduce in damage for each enemy hit like a lot of other skill shots in the game, so all enemies will take the same full damage. Use it for long range snipes, just be sure to have nearby targets like minions, jungle camps or even wards to activate the next casts. Use the first R to slow and catch enemies, so then you're able to get within range with E. Considering this isn't really mechanics, I've added more tips in the gameplay section, specifically the team fights part. Anytime you have to quickly push in waves or are defending your base desperately against enemy minions, use this for wave clear. In extremely clutch situations, perhaps you have a teammate backdooring, it's extremely effective at interrupting enemies from backing from long range. A quick passive mention. The healing you receive from your passive is insane at later stages of the game, especially once you have completed Riftmaker and have plenty of AP. Keep this in mind in fights as it can help you survive. You should also use it for sustain by clearing minions or jungle camps to regain health, saving you from backing. Observe any grievous wound items and even ignite before engages as this can negate a lot of your healing. Early game laning phase. Invades are quite favorable for Gwen, especially with her level 1 E start, where you can deal plenty of damage with auto attacks. Use it also to jump over walls for safety anytime you're being invaded. Laning phase is the same for most games. You want to try to play aggressive aiming to E dash into auto attack range. You'll usually be able to out trade enemies at this stage, even while tanking minion damage. Look to re-engage once E comes off cooldown again, aiming to keep your conqueror stacks and even ignite to get a kill. Against ranged champs, it might be safer to go for hard trades when you're level 3 and you can then activate your W shield after a trade for safety. Try to keep your Q fully stacked on minions so you're ready to engage at any time. Remember to use W whenever you need to walk up to last hit minions, using the shield to tank enemy abilities and autos. You'll want to decide early whether you want to try to push the wave, which may not always be possible, or try to let the wave push so it sits ideally just outside your tower to encourage ganks from your jungler. Use the W shield to tank some damage if needed for the freeze. Against heavy pushing champions, you'll end up CSing under tower. Use your W under tower for safety. Your enhanced E auto attacks will make it much easier to last hit minions. If you're going to push the wave, make sure to pay attention early to where the enemy jungler started. You'll then want to place a ward on the opposite side and stay close to this side with vision. Consider placing aggressive wards in the enemy jungle as well, since you are strong in early skirmishes with your jungler. Trading combos and skirmishes. If you've frozen the wave closer to your tower, you now have a lot of distance to go for hard trades and even all-ins. 
If waves are pushed in, it might be a little harder to deal damage, but look for Q pokes when enemies are trying to last hit. Ideally, you want to break any freezes around the enemy tower, as when enemies freeze in front of their tower, it makes it much harder to go for the hard trades and you'll basically be unable to output most damage from your abilities, and especially your enhanced E auto attacks, and of course, you'll be more vulnerable to ganks. If you do notice early on that your jungler is invading, or they let you know, then pushing the wave in or having it sit in the middle would be optimal, as you'll have priority in skirmishes early on. With your E, you can dash and maneuver through parts of the jungle. With an early level 3 combo and your jungler to help, you'll burst most champions. Stay alert and be ready to start fights in the river when junglers go for early crabs. Aim for at least 1300 gold before your first recall to base, for your leeching seer, where you'll have a decent power spike. If you have to early back, dark seal, boots, refillable and any basic items like amplifying tome or ruby crystal is fine. 1v2 or more strategies. When you're about to be ganked or engage against more than one enemy, quickly figure out the target you want to attack and the target you want to avoid taking damage from. You'll then want to use W for safety to avoid taking damage and go aggressive on your main target. This will buy you a bit of time before the other target has to enter. When to trade. Trade windows, harassing and waves. As a melee champ, trades can be very costly for the laning phase and can even decide the impact you have on an entire game. Obviously, this can be heavily dependent on the enemy champ, but a general rule of thumb includes a few things. Stay at or close to full HP before an engage. This means avoid a taking heavy poke before level 3. Sometimes if you've taken TP, you can afford to take bad trades early. Having minion wave closer to your tower. This will give you the space you need to combo the enemy over a longer trade. Have a plan after your combo. Can you all in? Then it's time to ignite and finish with as many auto attacks as possible. If you can't all in, make sure you have your W or you factor in the damage you'll take after the trade from the enemy returning damage as you walk back. The size of the minion wave. A large minion wave will significantly ruin your chances at winning a trade. Try to thin or even out the wave before a hard trade. Try to land a few Q pokes beforehand. Chunking champs with Q before a hard trade is always the safest method to securing a lead in lane. This can vary though, as some champs have the sustain to negate poke damage. Wait for enemies to miss at least one of their abilities, ideally their important ones, which are mostly CC abilities, or be ready to quickly use W to cancel it. CC will be your main threat, as it can completely stop you from auto-attacking and comboing, allowing the enemy to kite you to death. If you follow most of these rules, you'll be safe in most matchups. At level 6, you'll have solid kill potential on most squishies, if you get a full rotation off. Roaming. Gwen's gank potential is restricted by the lack of CC. However, her massive AoE and single target damage can make up for this. You'll want to prioritize lanes that already have CC, when enemies are really pushed in, or are low enough to dive. E dashing in to gap close, followed by your Q and ultimate for damage will almost always result in a kill or at least a flash. Make sure to push in your wave before most roams, using your Q and E auto attacks. Pushing mid tower. Enemies should never underestimate your potential to take towers extremely fast. There will be instances where your laner will roam before you. When you're unable to follow your laner or your team backs off after you spam ping them, just focus on pushing waves and taking towers using your passive attack speed empowered auto attacks for additional damage. For example, two tower plates is worth 320 gold, which is about a kill in gold, and you'll be closer to opening up the map by taking their mid tower. Be prepared to catch out squishy vulnerable champions who can't pass through river or jungle on their way back from bot or top lane. Skirmishers. We mentioned earlier how skirmishers are mostly in your favor. Once you've reached level six, this becomes amplified and you should force fights anytime you have the chance. Gwen really excels in these situations and you should look at opportunities to snowball the game and make plays. To summarize most of what I've already mentioned into common situations. If you're ahead, look to kill your laner, jungler, and push your lead by roaming. Force fights with your jungler in skirmishes wherever possible. Push minion waves in so your jungler has priority. Early fights around Dragon and Herald will favor you because of your W and ultimate. If you're behind, safely farm by spamming Q and W shield to at least get cannons, keeping in mind the points I mentioned earlier, especially staying close in levels at minimum. Roam when you can and avoid dying to your laner anymore. Try to stay as patient as possible and be ready to set up if your jungle is ganking. Gwen still has a lot of potential to fight people when you have your ultimate, even if you're behind. 
try to peer off the map and out of vision even if you don't intend to roam. Applying this sort of pressure may help your other lanes as the enemy mid will be spamming missing pinks, consequently forcing other enemy laners to play passive. These two conditions assume your team is even in gold and levels, so let's cover two more conditions. If you're ahead but your team is behind, as a fighter and assassin, you need to focus on killing the enemy champion that is fed and has a shutdown. Assuming your enemy laner is behind, now it's time to spread your lead to lanes that are struggling. You're dealing plenty of damage at this point, so if possible, do what you can to output damage early so your teammates are encouraged to pick up kills on low HP targets. This doesn't mean you should engage and put yourself at risk because you're still worth a shutdown in gold, but allowing your teammates, especially late game carries, to pick up some needed gold will give you that late game assurance. If you're behind but your team is ahead. At this point, you'll lack damage but your W and ultimate is still extremely useful. Don't be afraid to die in a teamfight if it means you can stall time and soak up enemy abilities, allowing your teammates to capitalize and deal more damage. Even simply going in deep to the enemy backline and forcing them to stay back while you W shield, E dash, heal massively from your passive, and Zonya stall, this will give your carries a chance to output damage without much threat on them. Mid game. Item plus level power spike, making picks, forcing fights and objectives. This is Gwen's time to shine. You'll usually have two to three AP items, which is more than enough to burst most squishies. So be ready to catch enemies out. At this point, you should be looking to make picks with or without your team. A single pick can really open up the game, giving your team the advantage to take objectives. This is also the time where you have an amazing potential to 1v2, even 1v3 or more, especially if you can camp a brush and catch enemies in the jungle or side lane. Even if you get killed but take two enemies out, it will hopefully allow the rest of your team to pick up objectives and farm around the map. You do plenty of consistent damage to epic monsters from your abilities and passive autos, so be ready to help take those when you can. Fights around the river, jungle and epic monster pits are great for Gwen. Not only are champions grouped up, increasing your chance to damage and CC multiple enemies with your ultimate, there's plenty of brushes and lack of vision to catch players. Diving is an option if your team is ahead, especially if you can AoE champions with your Q and ultimate on multiple enemies and survive with Zonya's active. Side laning and farming. Anytime you are struggling or slightly behind, picking up farm from the side lanes is going to be a reliable way to stay relevant with gold and levels. However, this will put a target on your head, forcing one or more champions to come and deal with you. You'll have the tools to 1v1 most champions, but if you feel you can't or you're outnumbered, you may have to find a way to escape or stall for your allies to come and help. Practice and plan areas around the walls to dash over. Take advantages of areas like the alcoves, river or jungle whenever you're looking to farm side lanes. Split push strategy. If you're ahead but your team is behind, Gwen does have the potential to split push and at this point, something like a Nash's Tooth or even Lich Bane could be a one ticket to a comeback, helping you take towers extremely fast. Attracting one or more champions to come and deal with you may just open up the map, allowing your teammates to capitalize on objectives and finally winning a fight on their own with a numbers advantage. It's a much safer option to split push when you have TP, as the option to join your team is crucial, especially in solo queue. Vision control and snowballing your lead. Gwen really excels when the enemy lacks vision, as you can surprise E dash towards them, so upgrading your Trinket Oracle's lens and buying control wards will passively create pressure for the enemy team. Playing around team and especially supports. This is something to keep in mind in mid game, but look for synergy within your team, especially your support. If you have enchanted champions like Soraka, Janna or Nami, you can really push your limits. With a shield plus healing plus peel, you may even have the potential to 1v5 in some rare cases as enemies just won't be able to burst you before you heal and sustain. Objectives with your damage output. A last mention to always help with taking objectives. You have a consistent damage from all your abilities and passive autos, even more with items like Nash's Tooth and Lich Bane. Late game. A lot of the mid game applies to late game with Gwen. However, you'll be punished much harder if you ever decide to go all in and mess it up. Keep an eye on enemies who have flash or any important abilities on cooldown, as you'll have a greater chance to wipe them out early in a team fight. Try to build accordingly, keeping in mind factors like team comp, enemy team comp, damage output, and survival items like Guardian Angel, Maw, Spear of Visage, Sterax, etc. Like most assassins, you'll have a much harder time assassinating squishy targets, as they'll be constantly grouped and finish their survivability items like Zonya's and Guardian Angel. Again, fights around Barons, Elder Dragons are great since tight areas force enemies to group together. 
unconventional strategies. If the chance the back door arises and you have TP, be ready to make a play. If enemies have an open base and you are confident they're all out of base, or at least the main threats are defending, it's your time to TP in and win the game. You can also solo Baron or Elder late game with around 4-6 to six items, so either try to sneak it, have your teammate appear on the map, or even duo it with a tank, another high damage champion, or supports that have shield or heals. Team Fighting When it comes to team fighting, there are many ways to approach them, but try to have an objective before the fight starts. Here are some tips and ideas to consider that will open up your options. Multiple enemies grouped up First and foremost, when it comes to playing Gwen in teamfights, you should aim to hit as many enemies with your Q and R as possible for the AoE damage and healing. Use your R needles whenever enemies are in tight or narrow areas of the map. Burst Squishies Another important focus with a champion like Gwen. Bursting an enemy carry, especially before a fight even starts, can easily win the entire fight. Frontlining Becoming a frontline is a playstyle you have to take on, especially when your team lacks an actual tank. This means anytime you E dash in, you'll instantly have multiple enemies targeting you, so Zonya's becomes essential to buy time after your W mist runs out. Engaging If you don't have an effective engage on your team, it will be up to you to initiate fights. Gwen excels when enemies have almost no time to react, so consider flanking from different directions. Even coming from behind will catch most players off guard, forcing them to panic and give your team the upper hand so they can collapse. Try to use your E dash over walls to position for the surprise factor. Peel When you have an extremely fed carry, you've fallen behind and you don't have an easy way through the backline, peeling may be best, so figure out which carries you want to prioritize to protect. Output damage towards the enemy champion attacking your carry and use your ult to slow them. Shred tanks. With plenty of true damage from Q and consistent damage through auto attacks, you'll be able to shred most tanks. Stall and bait tactics. Absorb enemy abilities with W when you can. This can waste enemy abilities, allowing the rest of your team to have less threats. You can also stall with Zonyas as mentioned and E dashes by deciding to dash over walls if you're being chased. Absorbing pressure. With high potential to 1v2 or more, you can force enemies to have to deal with you, allowing the rest of your team to fight with a numbers advantage. While you're taking on 2, the other 4 members of your team can at least only have to deal with 3 enemy members. Sniping Remember to use your long range R to snipe any low HP enemies further away. Basically, you could be auto attacking and using Q on the front line, but aiming your R towards the squishy back line. Zoning there are times the enemy backline is separated from the frontline. This doesn't mean you should just jump solo into the enemy backline. Instead, just zone their backline, constantly walking back and forth so enemies are scared to get close. This will stop them from outputting damage while your team hopefully shreds their frontline. So you're interested in learning Gwen, but aren't sure if she's worth investing time on. Perhaps you want to main her, or you just need another option for your champion pool. Let's go over strengths, basically reasons you want to play Gwen over other champions. Then we'll cover weaknesses you want to consider, as well as mention solutions to counter these weaknesses. Strengths Damage output By far one of Gwen's biggest strengths is the massive amount of damage she can output. AoE damage for potential to kill multiple enemies. True damage and percentage HP to shred tanks. Consistent damage through auto attacks and low cooldown abilities to win extended fights and potential to burst anyone with a full combo. Squishies, tanks, even epic monsters, no one is safe. Outplay potential. With a calculated use of her W, Gwen becomes a huge threat, even against two or more enemies. With the possibility to completely negate an entire champion from fights, it will take some risk and coordination from enemies in order to deal with you. And just for icing on the cake, she's given a low cooldown dash on her E, which adds even more outplay potential. Sustain. With a passive that heals from auto attacks and abilities, Gwen has great sustain in lane and later stages of the game, able to recover from bad trades or any time she's taken poke throughout the game. Add Riftmaker and Conqueror to the mix and she can sustain through multiple enemies attacking her. Split Push Threat. Her E increases the damage and speed of her auto attacks and with the help of items like Nash's Tooth and runes like Legend Alacrity, it makes her an insane Split Push Threat. Always look to gain gold from towers and look to shred towers to backdoor your way to victory. A versatile build. Apart from your mythic Riftmaker, 
the next item choices are completely situational. Are you able to output plenty of damage through auto attacks? Pick up Nash's Tooth. Need a survival item against the Fed Zed? Zonya's Hourglass. Enemy is all AD and attack based? Pick up a Frozen Heart. All AP? Second item Spirit Visage. Want to snowball? Magi Soul Stealer. With so much versatility, Gwen has an extremely adaptable build. Weaknesses Inconsistent damage. Basically, Gwen has plenty of avoidable damage. Mobile champions make it hard to output Q and R damage, as they are easy to dodge. Combating mobility will involve timing your abilities until enemies have used their dash. You'll either have to bait it out or patiently wait. As mentioned earlier, sometimes it may be better just to get 2 or 3 stacks of Q that's guaranteed rather than taking longer to get 4 stacks and having enemies dodge the entire ability altogether. And finally, try to spam her R as soon as possible as the stacking of the slow increases your chances to land the next R cast. With experience, your consistency will increase. Grievous Wounds Experienced enemy players will respect Gwen's strength to heal massive amounts and will therefore prioritize items like Grievous Wounds. There's no real counter to this, but checking items every so often can help you decide which champion you want to 1v1 later on. Even with reduced healings, Gwen's healing is still strong. Skill Based Although not the hardest champion in the game, it takes quite some time to adjust to Gwen's unique playstyle and use her unique abilities, especially her W. Understanding the potential of her E enhanced range and how much damage you can output and how much you can take will come down to experience and pretty much testing your limits. The only way to combat this kind of weakness is game time and even watching replays for key moments to see where you could have played slightly better. Like CC, apart from the slow on her ultimate, Gwen has no CC and relies purely on positioning and timing to consistently damage enemies. We covered a few solutions in the first weakness when it comes to damage. You can also wait for allies to hit CC before using your Q and R for more guaranteed damage. One suggestion and not really a big deal, but if you are in champ select, you could consider picking another champion if your team has absolutely no hard CC. Vulnerable without your W. While you're in W's mist, you might feel invincible. However, once it's over, you'll need a plan to stay safe. Items like Zonya's can provide an extra stall tactic, helping teammates follow up. Try to think ahead, especially in team fights. Although it's a great strategy to engage with W, if your team is currently weaker, it may be best to use this ability defensively, as if you use it aggressively, you might just become vulnerable and enemies will either walk into your mist all at once or they'll be ready to pounce on you once it's over. Again, another weakness that can be overcome by gaining experience over time, so don't be afraid to test your limits with Gwen and you'll be surprised how deep you can position between enemies and get away with it. Top lane. Many players will actually consider Gwen to be a top lane champion at heart, considering she is firstly a fighter. This guide is mostly focused around mid Gwen, however, you can consider everything in this guide applicable to top lane as well. One of the main differences compared to mid lane is the almost need to take TP on top lane or risk losing that valuable global pressure. When it comes to starting items, you should still consider Doran's Blade for most easy to medium lanes to provide sustain and training potential. Doran's Shield for the harder matchups. In certain matchups, you'll want to sacrifice Flash and take TP with Ignite. Ignite will be necessary against certain champions like Trindamir, where you'll need to have pressure to kill them or lanes will snowball against you. Taking TP will be necessary over Flash for this lane, as it will open up options later in the game to split push and join important teamfights around objectives. You can stick to most of the tips in gameplay and apply them to top, however, specific matchups won't be covered in this guide. You'll be able to use your W a lot more simply for fighting to reduce damage rather than to dodge and avoid skill shots like in the mid lane. However, your W will play an important role when dealing with ganks, and you'll want to save it for situations when you anticipate the enemy jungler or you just don't have vision at the time. Jungle Although she's not an optimal jungler, if you really want to play her, it's a viable choice. When it comes to jungling Gwen, I would recommend you either have plenty of jungle experience or plenty of experience with Gwen. Start E for the increased attack speed and damage it provides early. Then Q at level 2. You can skip on leveling W until level 4 if you plan to full clear, leveling up Q again at level 3. Here's a full clear example that will get you to level 4. In terms of ganks, Gwen is quite lackluster as she lacks any CC until level 6 and you'll either rely on teammates to set up the ganks with their CC 
or you'll have to position extremely well in order to output damage. This may mean coming from behind and catching them off guard. Skirmishes are one of her strong points, so be ready to contest scuttle crabs or join fights by counter ganking when you predict the enemy jungler. Invading is an option as you can maneuver over jungle walls with E, whether it's to catch an enemy or escape. Clearing is another strong point and you should look at taking objectives when you can and staying high in levels in gold by quickly clearing. Here's a few extras that weren't really essential to play Gwen, but you might find them interesting. Gwen will have a different walking animation once she reaches 470 movement speed. You'll need specific items to reach this speed and see the animation. Control 1, or whatever your joke button is, will sometimes transform Gwen into a small puppet. Enemies may actually have a hard time hitting Gwen with skill shots, as she becomes quite hard to see. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Let me know what champion you want to see next in the comments below. Considering Gwen is still the newest champions at the time of this guide, I'll consider updating this guide later in the season with more information on matchups. Let me know if you're interested in that. See you guys in the next video.